have one yeah, in the pews along there and underneath some of the chairs are some hymn books. If you would pick one out and turn to page 133. Hark the herald angels sing. Let's all stand and sing together, okay? that I uh, have seen that us do, and any church do, really. Uh, and I think you'll be uh, out, you know, you'll be, uh, you know, just amazed by the message of the play. It's so, so clear, so powerful. And, uh, but our prayer is for anyone that is listening by YouTube or by Facebook or here personally that have never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they accept Christ before it's too late. And, uh, and so... Um, but we want to thank you for coming out on such a bad night. And, uh, but I'm glad the roof doesn't leak and, and, and it's comfortable in here. I pray that you're comfortable anyway. Amen. And, uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and then I'll give you some announcements and, uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll receive the Lord's tithe and offering and then we'll get started. Okay. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bow before you. We thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we thank you, Father, for allowing us, Lord, lowly man. Lord, to be able to be a part of such a holy and righteous God. Lord, to be able to come to you and pray is a privilege. Lord, to be able to come to your house and worship you is a privilege. Lord, to be able to serve you and do something for you, Lord, it's an honor and a privilege. And Father, I thank you, Father, for those that are here, the safety you've given us all to be here. And Father, I know that you're working in hearts. Lord, I know that. And, Father, I know that when you do that, I know that the devil does all he can to hinder it. And I pray just for a few moments tonight that, Father, he'll just be hindered and that, Lord, he rendered just useless during this time. I pray that every line that needs to be said will be remembered and said. 
I pray the songs will be sung with affection and loyalty and devotion to you. And I pray above all tonight, Lord, what all that is said and all that is done, Father, I pray it will bring honor and glory to you. And, Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be able to be a part of it. For I'm humbled, Lord, to be able to be here. And I pray that, Father, we'll just recognize who you are and what you want to do in all of our lives. For we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I've already been asked if we're going to have church on, Sunday, on, on Wednesday night. That is affirmative. Church, church will go forward uh, here at Westside at the regular services Monday to uh, uh, Sunday and, and, uh, and Wednesday, just like normal. And uh, you say, but church, pre preacher, I think Christmas Eve on a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're going to have church on Sunday, Christmas Eve. And uh, so we'll be here. And New Year's Eve as well, we'll be here. And uh, just like normal, okay? So uh, be in your place. I want to get the ushers to come forward. I believe we have to receive the uh, Lord's uh, tithe and your offering tonight. And uh, praise the Lord for the missionaries we're able to support and all the things that are going on here at Westside Independent Baptist Church. Again, we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for what you do. And we can't, we can't do it without each other. And, uh, and, 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 and all coming together and being one to worship the Lord. And uh, we're thankful for, you know, if you, you look at the play and you look at the choir, one of the things we strive to do, and I'm thankful for all, all the folks that are involved, but we strive to involve our children as well as the adults. <coughs> We don't want to leave our children out because they're the ones that are going to be, you know, coming up right alongside of us, and they need to know how things are to be done so that one day they're going to be the ones doing it. And so, you know, we, we need to teach them and train them up the way they should go. So uh, you give just a couple announcements this week. Wednesday night church goes on. Thursday's Young at Heart, 10 o'clock. Be here at the church. We'll go to Fried Tomato. We're going to exchange gifts, that kind of thing. And, uh, and so remember that, and I'll uh, be here at 10, and uh, we'll go to Montgomery and come back, okay? Be in prayer for just a couple, just for a few folks. Joyce Phillips' family, we want to pray for that family. Be in prayer for Miss Amber and, 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 and Andrew's crew. I know they're hit back to Birmingham, and it um, looks like they, Andrew's and, and Amber and them are going to be tied to Birmingham at least through June, it looks like. And so we want to pray about that. We want to be in prayer for the, the, the Joyce Phillips family. We want to be in prayer for uh, the, the uh, Jewel Chandler family. I mentioned Brother Joe this morning. His mom passed away on Wednesday. That funeral will be tomorrow. And so we want to be in prayer for the family. And uh, Brother Joe, he's our, not only our treasurer, but he's one of our deacons as well. And so um, I'll be heading to uh, Atmore tomorrow for the funeral for his mom. So just be in prayer for, for the family there. And uh, be in prayer for those that are sick. Miss, Miss Jones' daughter, Lori Sears, many of you probably know her, uh, at least heard of her in name. Uh, has, she's been fighting multiple types of cancer for about 12 years. And uh, she's, in the, she's in Birmingham. And uh, the doctors say it can go either way anytime. So we really need to be in prayer for the family there. And uh, that's the Lori Sears and her family, Miss Jones, her family. The rest of the folks that are sick, we need to pray for them too. And, uh, and then just pray for all of our missionaries as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Ask God to bless the offering as we worship him in our giving and ask him to bless tonight. And I'm going to get Brother David Floyd, if you will, Brother, to pray and ask the Lord to bless the offering, okay? Father, once again, we come before you tonight to thank you for the opportunity that you've seen fit to allow us to gather in your house to worship you tonight. Lord, we do want to pray for everyone involved in this presentation tonight. We pray that uh, everything be done to honor and glorify you and touch the hearts and the lives of those that are hearing it. Lord, we just pray that you have your will and way there. Lord, we thank you for all those that are here tonight. We pray that you give them a special touch. Lord, we pray for this offering that we're about to receive. Pray, Lord, to be used for the furtherance of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, while we're taking up the offering, if you would, turn your hymn books to number 137. What child is this? 137. <laughs> Angels greet with anthem. 
yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming, no need to be so noisy. <sighs> what? Good morning, your afternoon, kind sir and madam. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Elizabeth Walker. I am selling Christmas goodies as a fundraiser for my school. All proceeds from this school go directly to my school. Don't worry, it's not a scam. Might I interest you in some festive goodies? No. M Perhaps you be, might be interested in some culinary delights. We have homemade gingerbread houses. No. Tasty peanut butter fudge, or at least I think that's what it is. Oh, that is repulsive. Get that away from me. I think I left it in the sun too long. Don't worry, my grandmother will still buy it. Perhaps you might enjoy these beautiful seasonal cards decorated with nativity scenes. No, no, no. I don't want any of your junk. I would hardly call this quality Mark and Joyce junk. Would you be interested in the next high with an electronic Rudolph nose? It blinks. Did you not see the large no soliciting sign in front of the neighborhood? Oh yes, sir, I did. Unfortunately, I have no idea what that means, but I would definitely keep an eye out for any suspicious characters. Young lady, hand handling is a misdemeanor, or at least it should be. So if you would kindly take all this junk off my front porch, I may decide not to call the police. I'm sorry if I was being too persistent. My teachers show me it's both enduring and trying. Oh, I can see that. Norma, I need a nerve pill. This child is upsetting me. Who's Norma? She's my caretaker, as if it's any of your business. I'm very sorry to have bothered you. Here, take this candy cane on the house. Young lady, did you not see that my house is the only house in the entire block that doesn't have any Christmas decorations? I thought you maybe haven't gotten around to putting it up. <sighs> what kind of school has children peddle Christmas goods as a fundraiser anyways? High school does. Shady Mountain Christian School. It's a great school. I see. Come here. Sit down here. That explains everything. You've been brainwashed, you poor child. Dr. Fitz, did you want your pills? Uh, yeah, yeah, hold on a second, Norma. Listen to me, kid. You ignore anything they teach you at that school. You're being taught nothing but lies and foolishness. Dr. Fitz. Coming, Norma. Now remember what I said. You ignore anything you hear at that school, especially anything about Christmas or Jesus.
What is it now? Hi, I'm Charity Walker. I live just down the street at 201. Yeah, I know who you are. You're the one who left cookies on my porch when you moved in. Yeah, I guess I did. Well, I'm diabetic. I would appreciate it if you didn't leave those poisonous things on my doorstep. Also, that literature about summer cookout and fall festival at some church, that belongs in the trash bin, not on my doorstep. I'm sorry about the cookies. I had no idea. Well, so you didn't. What do you want now? My daughter Lizzie came by a few minutes ago selling Christmas stuff yes, for Yes, I vividly remember. What of it? Well, she seems to think that you told her not to listen to anything her teachers say at school. I was sure she must have been mistaken, but she seemed very confused. I most certainly did tell her to ignore any brainwashing dribble spoon-fed to her at that poor excuse of a school. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, sir, I must say I am shocked. I for sure thought Lizzie had misunderstood what you were saying. I may, I know you may not believe, may believe, I know you may not agree with our beliefs, but I would appreciate it if you wouldn't tell my little girl not to listen at school. Well, I would appreciate it if you didn't let your little girl trespass on my property and panhandle worthless junk like some vagabond on my front porch. I tried telling him it wasn't junk, oh. Mom. I even showed him the tie. Norma, I need another pill. This child is back. Look, Mr. Uh, Mr. It Fitz, it, it's Dr. Fitz. Dr. Fitz, I'm sorry that we bothered you. We'll make sure not to bother you with anything else in the future. Good. I'm an old and sick man who isn't going to live much longer, and I'd just like to have a few days of peace. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Dr. Fitz. I'll be praying for you. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. There most certainly is something you can do. Don't pray for me. And take that child out of that crazy school. She's a bright one and has lots of potential. I told you, he kind of likes me. He just looks like a mean old man out on the outside. I didn't spend 40 years educating students in molecular biology to stand silently by while children are taught superstition. Well, I don't think I can do either of those things, Dr. Fitz. I'm going to pray that God brings true peace to your soul, peace that only comes through the gospel. I'm going to pray for you too, Mr. Dr. Fitz. Oh, Norma, bring me two pills this time. Norma. Mr. Dr. Fitz. Would you like to come to my Christmas play? Oh, uh, no, Lizzie, he doesn't want to. I'm going to be the star of the play at the top of the manger, and I'm going to sing a beautiful song about Jesus. Norma! Oh. What took you so long? I may keel over at any minute, and no one seems to care. I'm sorry, Dr. Fitz. I was on the phone with my son-in-law. My daughter's about to have her baby any moment. Oh, congratulations. I have to fly to Miami tonight. What? My, Miami? T tonight? What am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, Dr. Fitz. I'll call the agency and have them send somebody over as soon as they're available. But it is the holidays. Oh, that's just great. I'm most likely going to die any minute, and no one's going to be here to give me my last few pills before I die. Oh, Dr. Fitz, I know you're older than Methuselah, but it's not as bad as all that. Mr. Fitz, I have an idea. My older sister Sarah's a nurse. Well, she's in college studying to be a nurse. She and I can come over and babysit you. Ba babysit me? I, I don't need a babysitter. I just need someone to come and watch me die. Oh, well, in that case, maybe just my sister will come. Oh, what a great idea. Dr. Fitz really just needs some supervision and someone to pop him a pill every now and then. I'm sure she'll be qualified. Let me just check it with the agency. I don't know. I mean, is that okay with you, Dr. Fitz? Please, 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 Dr. Fitz. I'll make you Christmas cookies. I'll even help you decorate. Well, it doesn't seem like I have much choice, does it? No, it doesn't. Fine. On one condition, no Christmas.
get off my property. Lizzie, did you tell them they could trespass on my property? I thought you needed some Christmas spirit. Oh, and what are you doing now? Mommy said not to bring too many de decorations over because she really didn't think you wanted them. But oh. I knew you would love them. Oh, Sarah, the tree looks beautiful. Don't you think so, Dr. Fitz? Eh. Uh. Dr. Fitz, do you have any grandchildren? No, I don't. Do you think I could adopt you as my grandfather? I never knew my grandfather and I always wanted one. I don't think that's exactly how that works. Wait a minute. What's that in your hand, young lady? It's a shepherd. I told you you could bring a few decorations over as long as none of them were religious. But Mr. Fitz, that's impossible. Jesus' whole birth is the point of Christmas. It wouldn't even be a holiday without it. A deal's a deal. None of that nonsense in my house. Oh, Mr. Fitz, don't be such a Scrooge. Or I guess in the Christmas story, you would be the Herod. Who? Oh, never mind. Lizzie, why don't you sit down? You're looking a little flush. I'm okay, Sarah. I know you don't want Jesus in your house right now, but I sure hope one day you'll let him in your heart. I don't even know what that means. I know you won't. I know you don't, but I, but you will. Searching for 
Maggie, you wouldn't believe this child. She's just as pushy and excitable as you were. Being around her makes me miss you so much. Oh, and she talks about Jesus all the time. Yeah, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Maggie, I just feel so alone all the time. Hey, Mr. Fitz, how are you feeling today? You look great. Oh, good afternoon, Lizzie. I, I feel achy and miserable. Well, I know it will fix that. I brought you Christmas music. Oh, Sarah, you might as well bring me a pill now. Who's Maggie? What? I heard you talking to someone, but I didn't see anybody there. Oh. <clears throat> Maggie, she's my wife. She, she passed away a little over a year ago. I, I occasionally find myself talking to her without realizing it, I guess. Oh, is it kind of like praying? <laughs> no, no, it most certainly is not. I wish I could have met her. I know I would have liked her. I think she would have liked you, too. Did you say you needed a pill, Dr. Fitz? Oh, Lizzie, how are you feeling? I'm great, not achy or miserable. Well, I feel just awful, Sarah. And I need my pill, but I guess you don't care about me, do you? I'll get a pill for you right away, Dr. Fitz. <laughs> you left us here the other night. But that's where the lost shepherd went. I've been trying to think. What did the shepherds have to do with the baby Jesus anyways? Didn't they take him to the stable or something like that? No, they didn't take him. They found him. But why were they looking for him? Because they had heard their whole lives that a Messiah was coming who was going to set his people free. And then one night, while they were sitting out in the fields, an angel appeared in the sky. He told the shepherds that the Messiah had been born that very night. Well, naturally, they all got really scared at seeing a big angel floating in the sky. But then the angel invited them to come and see Jesus and worship him. But if he was the great Messiah of the Jews, why did the angels bother telling random shepherds? Why didn't they tell important people? Or why didn't they tell everyone for that matter? There were kings who got to come see Jesus too, but the shepherds got to see him first. My teacher says that that's just the way God is. He isn't a respecter of persons, and Jesus wasn't just for the rich people or the religious people. He came to die on the cross for everyone, and anyone who believes in him can have eternal life.
That is a nice story. Very inspirational. It's not just a story, Mr. Fitz. It really happened. <laughs> I can tell you certainly believe it happened. Why don't you tell me the story again? Only this time, lead out all that make-believe stuff like the angels and miracles and all that. I can see we have a long way to go. You know, Mr. Fitz, even old people can become Christians. All you have to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your personal savior. Your Jesus has plenty of old people without adding me to the list. I'm sorry, Dr. Fitz. I can't find your pain medication. Do you remember where you put it last? Of course not. I'm old. I lose everything. You're the young one. I'm sure you'll find it, but hurry up. I feel awful. Mr. Fitz, will you come to my Christmas play tonight at school, won't you please? Lizzie, you ask me this every night, and I give you the same answer. I know, I know, but I know you would like it. I'm going to be the star of the show. Oh, are you playing the baby Jesus? Oh, no, we're using a baby doll for baby Jesus. Lizzie is playing the actual star, you know, the Bethlehem star. I'm going to stand at the top of this table and sing the star song. Well, that does sound entertaining. Sarah, did you find my pills yet? Yes, sir, they're right here. Lizzie, what's wrong? Are you feeling tired? I'm just sleepy, that's all. You know, for someone who's here to take care of me, you certainly don't do a very good job doing it. I'm sorry, Dr. Fitz. It's just... I've been asking for my pills over and over again. I'm sorry, Dr. Fitz. Here's your pills. But you know you're not the only person with problems? No. I'm just the only one dying. If you only knew the truth, then you would feel... Sarah, let's go. We have so much to do before the concert tonight. Goodbye, Mr. Fitz. I hope you feel better. I pray for you every night. Bye, Dr. Fitz. I'll be in tomorrow morning. Good night, girls. And good luck tonight, Lizzie. <laughs> the star costume. Who's ever heard of such? What did she write on this CD anyways? Hmm. Christmas music should help answer your questions. I wonder what's on here.
Excuse me, have I found my way to the illustrious Christmas program? Illustrious Christmas program, yes you have. This is the children's Christmas play, play at Shady Mountain Christian School. Is everyone here always so perky? Well, okay, now, we're having a good time here. Do you have a grandchild in the play? No, not, not, not exactly, but kind of. Well, i tell you what, why don't you hurry on and take a seat? We're about to start. Well, I actually need a seat next to the aisle. And, and preferably away from any drafts. Oh, oh, oh. And I hope there's no strobe lighting.
Sir, I, I, I came here tonight to see Lizzie Walker. She, she was supposed to be in the play, but I, I, I didn't see her anywhere. Oh, I'm so sorry. Tell you, man, Lizzie hasn't, uh, she's in the hospital. She's what, having another episode. What, 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 an episode? What, what are you talking about? What kind of episode? Yeah, Liz, Lizzie's real sick. What, what? Yeah, she's had to, you know, she's missed a lot of school. We, we worked her in as best no, we could. But no. She had an episode no. this afternoon, but she just wasn't able to make it. No, 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 that, that, that can't be. That, that, that must be somebody else. I'm basically a relative. I must get through. Oh, Lizzie. Oh. Oh, oh dear God. I know I haven't talked to you very much, or you really haven't heard from me very much. I guess what I mean is, if you could just listen to me this one time, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I know I spent most of my life denying you, and it, and it seems so shameful for me to be coming to you now, but God, I feel helpless. This. This little girl is such a wonderful little girl, and it seems so wrong that she should suffer. Please, God, just spare her life. Please don't take her away from me and her mother. We need her. I'm sorry I spent all these years fighting against you. I used to think you were harsh and uncaring and mean, and I wanted so much for you not to be real. But this little girl and her family, they taught me that I was wrong. I know that you are the God of kings and shepherds. You love all people, even the most wretched sinners. Even people who denied you and fought against you. God, I believe in you. And I believe your son died for me. I accept you as my savior. I have heard the story of your birth in death, and I believe in you.
please, Lord, hear my prayer. Please, don't let this little girl die. I'm not dying, Mr. Fitz. I was just taking a nap. Oh, Lizzie, you're awake. Careful, Mr. Fitz. The doctor took wires in me. I'm sorry. I'm just so happy you're all right. Were you just praying? Yes, Lizzie, I was. After a long life of running from God, I think I finally just wanted to accept him as my savior. Mr. Fitz, that's the most wonderful news I think I've ever heard. Oh, Mommy, did you hear? Mr. Fitz, Mr. Fitz trusted Christ. Dr. Fitz, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. You know, I never told you this, but my wife Maggie, she was a believer. Really? Yes. She went to church with some friends of hers a few years ago and came home announcing that she was a Christian. I was so angry. I, I was awful to her. I, I was awful about her faith. I just couldn't understand why she would believe in a God that made her so sick and took her from me. I've struggled with the same thoughts the past few years since Lizzie got sick, but I always remember that his way is best no, no matter what I may think or feel. I just wish I could tell Maggie that I finally accepted Christ as my Savior. Don't worry, Mr. Fitz. She knows. W what do you mean? Well, the angels have been celebrating in heaven for at least five minutes by now. H how do you know that? The Bible says in Luke that there was joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. So when you repented and accepted Jesus as your Savior, the angels in heaven celebrate him. I'm sure Maggie must have heard them. Just think how loud an angel celebration must be. Mr. Fitz, are you crying? I'm just so happy. Does this mean I can bring the rest of my Christmas decorations over? You can bring over anything you want, especially those shepherds. You know, Mr. Fitz, you're kind of like one of those shepherds because you heard about Jesus at Christmas time. And you found him at Christmas time. And because I was the least deserving to see the Savior, yet he still sought me. Lizzie. Tell me the story of Christmas one more time. Only this time, don't leave anything out. 